Hey everyone, um, how much progress have we made from my little tiny whiteboard in my house um, to now we're actually filming in a proper little mini studio for you guys. Um, so basically the other day in my story, you would have seen hopefully that I put up a question box asking you guys if you had any like questions or requests or worries or whatever about the opinion piece, um, whether that be for French or for Spanish. And kind of, the, I suppose the most popular answer in the sense that like probably half the answers were basically just with regards to things like how am I actually going to get good marks in it? How long does my answer have to be? How do I structure my opinion piece? How many marks is the opinion piece worth? All that kind of stuff. So it's all kind of to do with more like background information on the opinion piece for both languages. So I think what, um, well, hopefully what I will get the chance to do for you guys is kind of create like a little mini series, whether that be for French or for Spanish or hopefully for both if we have enough time. Um, but basically what I want to do is in this mini series kind of like talk about the opinion piece, talk you guys through like so we'll start off today with like the background to the opinion piece, kind of break the question down, talk a little bit about the marking scheme and stuff. And um, then maybe the next time we'll go through like phrases you can use no matter what comes up, which is another huge request from you guys. And then maybe we'll start looking through like vocab and stuff for different topics, just to maybe show you guys how we'd go about teaching some of the stuff um, up here, whether it's in our day school or in our um, weekly grinds or in our online grinds, whatever. So just to kind of give you guys a little bit of insight into that. So what we're going to look at today is I'm going to try and talk you through the opinion piece for both languages, so for French and for Spanish. Um, I'm actually not sure if this would work for German as well. I'm not too familiar with the German um, syllabus. Um, if it does work, brilliant. I won't know about the marking scheme and stuff, but I would assume, um, like, I suppose the marks are going to be broken down in a similar way if this is part of the German course as well. But basically, so to kind of get the ball rolling, what I've done here is we're going to chat about the opinion piece in the sense of like all of these different questions, right? First thing that we're going to talk about is who. So obviously, if the question is called an opinion piece, you need to be the biggest part of your answer, okay? So your answer needs to be all about you. Whether that is your thoughts, your beliefs, your feelings, your point of view, your relationship to the topic at hand, maybe how the topic affects your day-to-day -day life, all of that kind of stuff, I need to know what your opinion is and where that opinion has come from, okay? Whether that is real or fake, um, doesn't really matter but you need to be the biggest part of your opinion piece okay other things that we would see students bring up in their answers um it, basically you can bring up whoever you want in your answer but it again has to be there to reinforce your opinion so maybe like you might get really annoyed that the government does or doesn't do something or like that your family does or doesn't do something again it all has to be kind of connected back to you so some common things that we would see students bring up in their answers would be like um the government their family their friends, or maybe they've just learned phrases that happen to have these kind of entities in them. Um, then we might have things like young people, older generations, schools, politicians, whoever it is, it doesn't matter. Again, all of these things are just going to be used to implement more of a, um, I suppose, kind of back up your own opinion a little bit more. Okay, now what is the opinion piece? So I'm going to start off with these two words and everyone's going to panic when they see them. And it's an essay style question. Now, that does not mean that you are expected to write an essay for this opinion piece by any means, right? Whether that is in French or in Spanish. What it means is that this question is there to kind of show the examiner how you involve yourself with the language a little bit more. So like how you're able to connect and use, like connect with and use the language like in a more kind of formal sense, in the sense that like you're going to be using things like paragraphs, you're gonna have like an introductory statement, maybe you're gonna have a little bit of a conclusion and stuff at the bottom. So it's going to follow the same kind of idea as an essay in the sense that like it's, just, it's not just going to be like one big long paragraph. Okay, well at least that's how I would teach it is like to not just have it as one big long paragraph. Um, but again, it's not going to be like the same length as an essay or like maybe in as much depth as an essay, but it's going to kind of use some of the same structural ideas as an essay might um, in like the traditional sense. Okay, so it's an essay style question where students... express their opinion on a chosen topic. So whether that is one of your three options in Spanish at the end of your section B, whether it's your question one in French, whether it's a question three or four in French or something, um, where students express their opinion on a chosen title. Okay, where are you going to see it? So for Spanish, so I might actually just write S for Spanish and then F for French. So for Spanish, and this is really, really, really important for, um, I was about to say for Spaniards, 
for students of Spanish to know. Um, just again, because your Spanish paper, the two comprehensions can look quite similar, your opinion piece is only, 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 only ever going to be question five of section B. Okay, if you are doing your leaving service in 2021, you will have a choice of three titles. Um, usually you have a choice of two, but obviously we have um, been given a little bit more choice this year to kind of compensate for all the school that you guys have missed out on, okay? So it's always going to be question five of section B. French then, your main one is going to be your question one, whether you are doing your leaving service in 2021 or any year after that is always going to be question one. Um, and then you can also, so this is going to be hard for me to differentiate, right? But obviously for this year's French leaving service, your question one is going to be worth 60 marks as opposed to 40. And then you're going to do one more question out of um, like a range of different questions. I would assume as part of those range of questions, there are going to be like mini versions of opinion pieces, which would is usually we would associate with a traditional question three and four of the normal leaving cert paper like layout okay so again it mightn't be question three and four like in, in a sense of like the exact same numbers this year but i would assume that those style questions are still going to form a part of your other um written production section okay when you're going to do it i tend to leave this until the beginning of sixth year it's not by any means wrong to do them any earlier or any later than that and um, the reason i don't do them in fifth year and i don't kind of cover them in fifth year grinds and stuff is simply because i just think that maybe fifth years don't have um, maybe the confidence or the skill with the language at that stage to kind of like start talking about more abstract things and I think therefore like when that happens like if you do them at the beginning of fifth year or something maybe when your language isn't where you would want it to be that it can quite often kind of make these questions seem way more um, daunting way more intimidating than they would otherwise so like I tend to like cover other questions in the exam in fifth year or in fifth year grinds and then when we get to sixth year I'm like okay now you have the language we've worked our way up to this and now we're going to start into our more formal style question okay if you do them before or after, it's absolutely fine. It's just my own opinion on it, okay? Now, why do you have to do it? So, well, first of all, we have to show evidence from, like, so show evidence of progress from junior cycle to senior cycle, okay? Because, like, I always say this, especially in Spanish, like, if you got to sixth year, all you were able to do was, like, at higher level Spanish, say, hey, Juan, greetings from Dublin. Um, would you like to come visit me this summer? We can go to the beach and swim in the sea. That doesn't look good in anyone, so we kind of have to have a little bit of progression um, at higher level for that, okay? Um, and kind of same thing with French as well, right? So we've got that side of it, okay? The other side of it is then, is that it's just like it shows evidence of like skill with the target language, so like whether that's French or Spanish, so it shows evidence of skill with the target language because you're going to be expressing opinion and you're going to be like arguing a point, okay? So it's going to show evidence of like expressive and argumentative writing skills, which are two kind of huge factors in the senior cycle. Um, so expressing opinion and arguing points across. Okay, how many marks are going to be worth? So again, let's break this up into our two languages first. So we've got Spanish. So Spanish is going to be 50 marks out of a total of 400. So your opinion piece is going to be worth 12.5%, which means it's going to be worth the same as half of your oral exam. And um, then for French, so again, for 2021, I might just write that beside it. Okay, so for 2021, your question one is going to be worth 60 marks out of 400, okay, which is 15%. Can't wait for that to be wrong, but anyway, so what do I think of this, right? So it's 15%. Um, and then your question one usually, so if you do this, sorry, any later than 2021, be 40 marks out of 400, which is 10%. And then your questions three and four will be worth less marks, but this is kind of our main focus for this, okay, is our question one. Okay, and then how are you going to do it? So this is kind of one of the most important things I suppose we're gonna cover in, our, in this video, is that we've got two skills. So you can look at, we've got like content and communication. So that would be referred to as like C when your teachers are correcting your work or when your work is getting corrected for your mocks or something, okay? So content, communication, and then your language. Now we're going to break this down into, I suppose like, what's why I usually refer to it as crimes, like normal human English, because the marking scheme is very often so formal that it's like very difficult to actually understand what the question or what the paper means. 
Um, if we're looking at these really basically, your content communication is how well you've answered the question. So how well you've answered the question. And then your language is how well you use your target language. So whether that is French or Spanish or if you're doing both. Okay. Now, you might bring your attention to kind of what I'm actually phrasing this as, so how well you've used your target language. That does not mean that everyone is expected to have perfect French or perfect Spanish or that you're going to have all of these different tenses, whatever. This is your level of French or Spanish. You've honed it down to kind of, you've made it as easy as possible for yourself and you're really going to try and nail that in the exam, okay? Now, things that we're going to be able to do to kind of make sure that we do this properly, so how well we've answered the question, is the most important one is that we're going to ensure that our answer has very little or none at all, little or no irrelevant material. And that is why if you've ever sent me a message on Instagram asking, can you learn off opinion pieces? Absolutely no way. And that's the reason for it, okay? You have to answer the specific question that is being asked regardless of what language you're doing. Okay, other things that we would see come up on one or both marking schemes would be things like communicative intention fulfilled. What that means is that like you would in English, that like whatever you said you were going to do in your in your answer, so like in your introductory statement, if you've said that you agree with the title, that your points show how you agree with the title, that you fulfill what you said you were going to communicate in your answer. So like whatever you said you were going to communicate is what you've actually done by the end of your answer. Okay, other things then that I would appreciate as an examiner would be like good structure, good layout. So again, maybe things like you're going to use paragraphs, you might... Um, kind of have a very obvious introduction and conclusion statement and stuff. Again, it doesn't need to be really long, but that is just like very obvious to me, like what part of your essay or what part of your opinion piece um, belongs. Like, I don't know how to phrase this, that like you have an obvious kind of very like simple structure and your answer is very easy to actually like look at straight away. Um, then we would have other factors um, like high level of coherence, AKA your answer makes sense. Okay, and that it flows properly. So like I might say that, so like good fluidity. Okay, then your language is going to be things like correct usage of tenses. That doesn't mean you have to use every single tense you've ever learned. It just means that the tenses you do learn, you've used correctly. You would have correct agreement so that you know the gender of the nouns that you're using. And if you're using an adjective or an article with those nouns, that they're going to match. So again, masculine with masculine, feminine with feminine, singular with singular, plural with plural. Um, we would have then good syntax, so like easily understood sentence structure, basically, is what we're saying there. So syntax is referring back to your sentence structure. Um, and then again, this whole idea of like good fluidity will kind of come into your language as well, in the sense that like you're not just like jumping from one point to the next or like you're not just using like very blocky phrases that like your answer kind of has some sort of like elasticity to it as well okay so that's like now and this isn't like exactly what's written on the marking scheme but this is kind of just to make maybe make it a little bit more obvious to you as to what we might be looking for um for i suppose for you to get good marks in this the way that these are going to be marked each of them each skill so content communication or language is going to be worth half the marks for every language so like in spanish it'll be 25 and 25. Question one this year will be 30 and 30. Every year after that it'll be 20 and 20, so on and so forth. Okay, um, so hopefully that has kind of, I suppose, um, given you a little bit more insight into what the Vietnamese is actually expecting you to do. Um, and yeah, so let me know if you have any other like suggestions or ideas for things you want me to cover in this mini series and hopefully we can get you guys all sorted for the status apps. So, um, merci beaucoup, much I'm and hasta pronto. Adios.